those of you expecting second round action in the West at Key Arena in Seattle, it's time to take you to the tip off of your game. Tenth seed Gonzaga, second seed Stanford. Let's go to Seattle and join Kevin Harlan and John Sunbowl. Thank you, Greg. Welcome to Seattle. Key Arena is rocking. It's the second round of the NCAA tournament, the West Sub Regional, as 10th seed Gonzaga will take on second seed Stanford. Both teams at 26 and 6. Gonzaga beating a depleted Big Ten Minnesota team on Thursday, and Stanford got a scare from Alcorn State, John Sunbold, on Thursday, but these two teams. Are ready to go with Gonzaga starting Calvary and Eaton at the forwards from a great shooting guard with Clinton Hall at the guards joined by Santangelo and Stanford going with Sauer, Madsen, Young, Weems, and Lee. And if that looks familiar for Coach Mike Montgomery, it should. That was the same starting five in San Antonio at the Final Four a year ago. Take a look at Mike Montgomery, this ball club experience as they come into this game. Kevin, the key for Stanford, though, stop Gonzaga early. This team, the last two ball games in their conference tournament, they knock lights out seven of their first 11 threes. And on Thursday against Minnesota, they hit their first six early in the ball game. Dan Munson in his second year, a couple of 20-win seasons he has put together. Our officials today for this NCAA tournament sub-regional from the West. Tim Higgins, John Cluckerty, and Teddy Valentine. It's the Bulldogs and the Cardinal as you take a look at the series. And from Seattle, here we go. Stanford wins the opening 10. Matchup for the Bulldogs, a problem. They have a three-guard offense for the offensive reasons, but defensively, Peter Sauer has a smaller Richie Fromm one. Lee trying to go down low, and Hall was there, picks up the foul. Now, Quinton Hall was one of the reasons defensively why this ball club was so good against Minnesota. Played a box and one on Quincy Lewis. Lewis only three of 19. Hall was the one who shielded him most of the ball game. Here comes Arthur Lee. A first team all Pac-10 selection. Rebound lassoed inside the lane by Fromm. Here comes Hall with the fake by Lee. And they'll set their offense. And Gonzaga will push early and shoot often. Eaton with a great move. Rejected inside by 7-2 senior center Tim Young. And Stanford does not mind if Gonzaga wants to throw it inside. They are big and they are strong. And if you go in there, you better have some power because these guys will wipe it away. Santangelo with Young with the flash of defense. Now going back in the pivot. And here's Hall. Just in with Lee. Santangelo good off the catch, but also good off the dribble. And that one goes in and out. Missed on the play by Calvary. And here once again comes Lee. Hitting south. Looking for Young. Intercepted down low and picked off from the other way. Giving off to Santangelo. Young coming out to defend the guard. Good step out by Young. Again, Santangelo and Fromm have quick releases, Kevin. Hall rushed to him down the lane. Good to go. Young cleans the glass. Lee with the acceleration. That will fall short. And not a good shot. Good help defensively by Casey Calvary. Eaton at the other end. Sauer gets that. The Cardinal the other way. Missed opportunities early. Usually affect the team that's the underdog, and that's Gonzaga. Weems into Santangelo, and a foul call down low on Santangelo. As Chris Weems, who dad was at one time a big eight official in the Midwest. Yeah, Stanford also pushing the ball, trying to get early opportunities. They would like Weems to get in the game early. One of those guys that's good off the screens, open shooter. See if he gets his stroke going from the foul line. Take a look at the field goal story. Again, Gonzaga wants to push, get a lot of attempts to the rim. Maryland wins, St. John's, Clarks, Indiana, and UConn absolutely destroyed ninth seed New Mexico in Denver. Those are the three results in so far. For more action, I'll end the CBS.sportsline.com. Chris Wings. And UConn appears to be on a mission. Jim Calhoun back this afternoon. Good to see him healthy. They were fine. They are in the Sweet 16. Stanford has a one nothing lead. Screen by Kelvin. Good help by Madsen. From Santangelo. Calvary knocks down the triple. 43% three-point shooter. Good high screen. Good roll back. 
Hanson, who had the double-double the other day. Working into Calvary. Calvary very athletic and sometimes overreacts defensively. Lee with the pass to Manson, and he overshot Young. And here come the Bulldogs. It's Santangelo the other way, going into Sauer. The mismatch there. Calvary just hit, and he swings it off on the side to Fry. Sauer, athletic enough at 6'7", to be able to move his feet, stay in front of the smaller guard. He is nimble. From for three. Sauer tried to get a hand on it. Manson brings it down. Arthur Lee the other way. Lee from Los Angeles. And so far, Gonzaga's shots have been challenged. The Stanford team back doing a nice job getting back defensively. They do have a size of that. Mm -hmm. Down with Eaton there. Twisting and turning and hooking it off. Rebound by Calvary again. He's got three. Great block out. Matson not even close to that rebound. Santangelo flies. Rejected by Young. Swats it out of bounds. The Bulldogs will get it back. The second block shot for Young. And I think Santangelo, when he puts it on the floor, he's going to recognize the fact that if I get inside, here comes a help by the Cardinals. I have to find shooters. My teammates have to find openings so I can convert the pass. Oh, they looked allowed. And overlay, he props it out to Calvary, now to Santangelo. Eaton and Young jousting on the block. And Eaton brings Young out, but he can't hit the shot. A cold, cold start for both squads. Gonzaga is one of eight, Stanford 0-3. Oh, now they'll back off Madsen, not a real good outside shooter. But he is good on the low block. Where he is right now. Madsen inside, had it stripped inside. They call a tie-up, and it goes back to Gonzaga with some impressive defense inside. Good, solid defense once again. The matchup, Calvary on Madsen, and Calvary very tough. He's physical, but this time he gets his hand on the basketball. Good call. Stanford has turned it over three times. Gonzaga has yet to turn it over in the opening minutes here from Seattle. jumped on top of second seed Stanford by a count of six to one. We expected the guards to do the damage. Right now, Casey Calvary has the only points for this Bulldog team. So, in the young. And he devours the smaller Eaton inside. Well, Eaton has given up about 30 to 35 pounds down low. He's going to have to use his lower body to keep Tim Young away from the hoop. On the sour there. Santangelo is in the middle. He'll just with wins. Here comes Lee. Stanford. With Manson inside, and he tried to spin on Calvary. And he is called for the foul inside for Dan Munson, the coach of Gonzaga. And if ever there has been a Cinderella team, this may be it. A timeout with four and a half gone. Gonzaga up by five over second seed Stanford. Welcome to Jam Pack Key Arena in Seattle. This is the second round. Gonzaga, the 10th seed, by beating Big Ten Minnesota. And the second seed, Stanford, as they climbed on all corn state on Thursday, meeting today. Right now, Gonzaga up by five due to no turnovers. They've taken six more shot attempts in the Cardinal, and they've gotten a couple threes. And the difference, Casey Calvary has all eight points for this ball club. We've talked about Richie Fromm and Matt Santangelo. Calvary providing some punch will now rest on the sideline. The inside denied by Eaton. Out of bounds it goes off the 7-2 senior center young. And solid defensively as they were Thursday against Minnesota early. Zaga putting out their winningest team in school history. The Cardinal won the Pac-10 for the first time since 1963. Brown, a great screen for Eaton. He'll down a two. Gonzaga, very confident team, but when you get off to a good start like this against Stanford, you can see their faces. They feel good. A frenetic style to begin this game on the part of both teams. Young is on top, popping it inside. Manson's in a buzzsaw and was whacked down low and fouled. 
Leisure gets him for the first time with a push inside. Well, take a look. Watch the right knee go down on the floor. This has got to hurt. Dan Munson, Calvary, and Leisure rotating in and out to put a big body and to push Mark Matson around. Matson, one of the top power forwards in all of college basketball. And the heart and soul of this team. Yeah, he really is. Sauer driving, twisting, up and off. Rebound, lassoed inside by Matson. A first 35. Weems for three. Big shot for Chris Weems. He goes on the confidence factor. If he hits one or two, he could get on a roll. Santangelo weaving inside. He'll hit the runner off the block. Oh, this kid's so good off the dribble. Can pull it and shoot it. He goes all the way that time for the soft little runner. About five and a half minutes gone here in this first half. Gonzaga at 12-6 now over Stanford. Gonzaga, interestingly enough, as you see Axel Dench coming in. Kid from Melbourne, Australia. Gonzaga has tried to pair themselves after the Stanford team. Yeah, they really have. Kids, they, the type of kids they recruit. You know, a year ago, this Gonzaga team, 23-9, and nine, felt they were snubbed by the NCAA. So they get in here, they went to the NIT, won one ball game, watched another one. They get in this year, and they weren't surprised they beat Minnesota. They were disappointed that Minnesota wasn't a first strike. You could tell by the kids' reactions after that ball game. They thought, hey, don't snub us for winning, because we thought we could beat Minnesota if they would have been full strength. They're riding a pretty good wave right now. Oh, they've been on a roll. Leisure picks up his second foul. Gonzaga's got five to Stanford's no fouls called on them so far. You know, the conference championship, West Coast, Gonzaga wins by 25. And they come in here and they start against Minnesota and destroy them in the first half, being on for that victory. Even though Minnesota had a lineup depleted by alleged academic improprieties, and a foul is called on Manson. Make it seat his first. Six minutes gone, first half. For Gonzaga, this is like a home game. Their campus is in nearby Spokane, 280 miles away. Jench. Santangelo, got a screen. Another three. And it doesn't matter which way he comes off. He can go the right shoulder or the left shoulder. This is the biggest lead at 15 to 6. Weems with the drive across the lane, takes it inside, rebound ripped off by Dench. Here come the Bulldogs. And four blue jerseys going after that basketball. That's the key to rebounding for this ball club. They're not as big and not as physical as Stanford. And if they want to win, they're going to have to buy. Well, they have to. They struggled in the second half against Minnesota simply because the Golden Gophers start hitting the glass. Brown got a screen from Leisure. The ball retrieved in the corner and lost. And here comes Weems in a foot race with Santangelo on a three-on-two to sell. Brown has it. And not executed properly. Brown hit a ton of threes the other day. Wheeling into Sauer. Fading away and he can't get it to go. Weems collects it inside. You know, three great shooters in the lineup. From Santangelo and Ryan, they can all shoot the basketball. Or Floyd, Ryan Floyd. Sauer with Strom on him. Madsen is inside. Arkansas and Iowa underway in Denver, and they got it to go inside with the wonderful play. Madsen was in. Madsen likes to jump hook with his right shoulder, turns to the left shoulder, a little right-hand jump hook, then he will step back in the fake and up and under. Oklahoma State leading Auburn. Oklahoma State is surprised. Coming out of the Big 12. Leisure to Fry over Sauer. Kevin, it's simply the release of the basketball by these shooters. It's picture perfect. Don't have to have their body square because the right aim, the right shoulder is square to the basket when they catch it. What's your pulse on the emotion of these two teams? Well, what a battle so far early. Sauer for three. Seaton tapped it, but right to Santangelo. And Gonzaga wants to run. Weaving and whittling his way. Four for three. Oh, what a shot! Gonzaga basketball. You push it all the way, you find your open shooter. Gonzaga has gone four of six above the three-point arc so far. Sauer got a screen with the runner inside. Nothing but net. Coleman knocks that one in. A big basket for this Cardinal team. Leisure to Fromm. Sauer is there. Dench inside. 
And they'll throw it around. And notice how open the middle of the floor becomes with the great shooter surrounded. Jets for three. Rebounded inside by Leisure, colliding with Manson. There's a foul called inside. It's on Manson of Stanford. This place is on their feet. 20 to 10. Gonzaga up by 10. Gonzaga is led by 12. They've got eight points off of Stanford turnovers, and Gonzaga has seven assists on eight baskets. Outstanding job again. Gonzaga putting the pressure on this Cardinal team, Kevin. They're pushing it up the floor. They're keeping enough room so the lane is open to penetrate and then kick out to the shooter. Floyd has it. Got a screen. Nielsen's in the game for the first time for the Bulldogs. Then John Top, and he pulls out the 7 2 center young. Floyd to Calvary. To Floyd for three. Gonzaga is crackling. Catch and release. Five of eight on three point shots. They've got their biggest lead of 13 points. Wings to Mosley. He'll pop a three. Young gets it inside, but a foul is called on Stanford. And Mosley, one of those players that has to knock in outside shots. He has struggled lately. Only three of his last 21 from the field goal attempts coming off the bench in the last five ball games. He came over early this morning to try to get his shot going. But he can't take wild ones. Get a couple early in the set. Then to Floyd, the screen by Calvary. That's what they're going to call the foul. Moving screen. Moving inside. Well, the same group that starts today started in San Antonio last year in the Final Four. Well, a ball club that obviously hasn't had a lot of injuries. This is their 38th consecutive start as a group. They've been together 56 times starting, Kevin. 47 and 9. Impressive. And they've got their coach, Mike Montgomery. He's been there 13 years. Zaga by 13, enjoying their biggest lead. It's Mosley outside. Jousting with Nielsen, lost his balance, wins to lead. The key is Kevin Stanford will not get rattled. They've been in this position before, going to the Final Four last year. A lot of those ball games, they had to make great comebacks. Lee the miss, Young couldn't tap it. Nielsen collects it, all the other way, crossing the floor. And Nielsen picked up quickly by Weems. Dench to Floyd, and Floyd to eat. Overseat. Trap. it away. Now what Stanford again is doing, getting back defensively, make Gonzaga play a half-court game, get some bodies on him, stay with the shooters, make them throw it inside, see if they can beat him over the taller Cardinal play. Gonzaga leads in rebounding right now, John, 11 to 8. For Stanford, rebounding was a key against Alcorn State. Well, not surprising because Stanford only shooting 27% from the field. So there's going to be a lot of rebound. Young was trying to pop it inside for Manson, who is whacked underneath and is going to be at the free throw line. A foul called inside. And they put it on Eaton, who picks up number one. Every time Young or Madsen catches down low, a lot of bodies, there's a lot of pushing, there's a lot of shoving. Nothing has come easy. Here is the only junior among the five starters, and yet he may be, as we mentioned before, the heart and soul of this team. You saw the statistic, 55% free throw shoot. He is now 10 of 10. It's 1999 tournament. Delightful kid from Danville, California. Comes from a family of 10. And he hits his second throw. Obviously, Stanford, if they can score, then that slows down any of the momentum this Gonzaga team has built up. Wrench on top, and he's been handling the ball out on the perimeter. Britton Hall surveys. Mike McDonald now in for the cart. Nice spin by Nielsen and a great pitch out to Jetsch. At the open shot, rebounded by Madsen. How strong is that? Madsen has four rebounds. Not many will knock the ball away once Madsen gets both hands on it. Michael McDonald from Long Beach, California, running the point. Swings it down to Lee. What a shot! 
young man has hit a number of big shots in his career in this part of the uniform. A foul called on Eaton again inside for Gonzaga away from the ball. Momentum has changed, Kevin. Stanford, a couple baskets, a couple stops. Ben Munson now will go back to the bench. Eaton picks up his second. They'll bring in Mark Spink, who gets off the bench, a sophomore from Bellingham, Washington. Gonzaga, John, with three turnovers in their last four possessions. Well, the key so far early, too, Eaton's got two fouls. Calvary's on the sideline with two fouls. Leisure has two fouls. Manson wants to get at the free throw line. He comes into this tournament 56%, but John, he was nine of nine from the line the other afternoon against Alcorn State. Well, concentration. Two of two already this afternoon, and they just jinxed it. Santangelo running the point now for Gonzaga of the 10th seed. On a screen from bench. Put again by Young. They bring him a lot out to defend. Ball is swiped. The other end lead. Up and off. And rebounded inside by Spink, his first. Well, great hands initially by McDonald. Lee thought he got fouled on the layup attempt. They're letting him play. Yes, they are. That's good. Paul quickly converged upon by McDonald. He'll fire nonetheless. Rebound, spin, torn away by Young. Dench inside. He kept it to go. And you saw the spin that Dench put on the basketball. Spun it right out of the rim. He either needs to flush that one down or put it off the board. He went up, Kevin, and all of a sudden he turned his wrist and his hand. Watch the loose ball come up. Good fighting down low. The turn of the wrist at the end spins that ball. In this game, defensively in particular, John, we have seen big guys being brought out with a flash of defense perhaps at the top, and a lot of times they're on the offensive side pitching it either way. Well, in Gonzaga, what they'd like to do, get everybody outside so it opens it up so Santangelo can go off the dribble. Because all of a sudden when he takes off, everybody has to help out, and then he plays pitch and catch with some of his shooters, or he finishes it himself. And he can detonate with the best of all. He's terrific. Thanks again. Just under eight to play in Seattle in the first half. Gonzaga has this crowd in a tizzy up by 10. Well, there are two stories going on here. Gonzaga with the lead now of 10 points, 24-14. We've got just under eight to play here in the first half. With John Sundbull, this is Kevin Harlan. A frenetic pace to begin this game. Well, up and down the floor in Gonzaga, we always talk about their offense. Today, it's been defense, 29% for the Cardinals. They have struggled getting it in. Now the Bulldogs switch there and go to a half-court zone trap. Referee has just decided to change that last Stanford foul to Manson. That is his second. Stanford shooting 29%. Lee. To Mosley, converged upon by Santangelo. Young, the sweeping hook inside. And the 2 3 zone there, they pounded inside. They have to go back and help on Tim Young. And that's a chore. Yes, it is. 7 2, he towers over everybody. Santangelo, Lee is there. Nice screen by Spink that opened up room for Hall, and there's that 7-2 Young you were talking about. You cannot slide the gap, though, defensively. McDonald went up through. Hall still got an open look. You have to trail these shooters. Here comes McDonald. Lee has put every tick of the clock so far in the first half. Stanford trying to decide what defense they're playing against, and you don't know until you start moving. They're standing around too much. Arthur Lee missed it. Clinton Hall gets it. He'll race the other way. As you see, Iowa's lead on Arkansas by seven. They're down in Denver today. And Auburn trailing ninth seed Oklahoma State by three. Maryland a winner. UConn a winner. St. John's whacked Indiana earlier on. Santangelo to Nielsen. Dinch spinning on that axle. Couldn't keep it alive. Michael McDonald the other way. Great feed to Lee. And a foul call. Good solid break. Good pass. McDonald push up the floor. As a point guard, you make the decision. Once someone cuts you off, then you make the pass. 
Take it to the rim. If they're not going to stop you, there's the defense. A good pass. There's the push. Lee couldn't get control of his body to be able to finish that basket. Arthur Lee for Coach Mike Montgomery of Stanford is a senior from Los Angeles. And, and truly, John, he blossomed last year in the tournament. And this year, with some injuries, he had to take a lot of things on his own shoulders. Thus, his numbers were not as good as a season ago. Take a look at his free throws. Last year set an NCAA tournament record, 35 of 35 throughout tournament play. And he said, truly blossomed, led his ball club to the final four, made big shot after big shot on their way to that most outstanding player in the Midwest Regional. Stanford's and Smetson has checked back in on 8-1 to run, and Gonzaga has had one point in the last four and a half minutes. Brown might try to change that with Santangelo. And Santangelo is the one that makes it happen just by his dribble and his ability to release a jump shot. Draws a lot of attention. Dench inside. Puts it up and in. Good hoop for Dench. Gives him a little confidence. He's missed a couple by the rim. And again, Gonzaga not with a lot of size, so when their big men score, it means something. And again, they have three bodies on the sideline with two personal fouls each. So Dench is going to have to play some big minutes his first half. Now they got Spink on Manson in the middle. And a foul called on Mark Spink. A 6'8 sophomore. For complete coverage in this great tournament with live scores, stats, and more. Check out Tournament Live only at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. And Stanford now with a bonus of shooting two free throws. Here's Manson again. Missed his last and cans that one there. Kevin, I think it's hard for players sometimes. I know Dan Munson wants his team aggressive, but aggressive means with your body and with your feet, not with your hands and reaching. And so far early in this first half, that's what it's been. It's been a lot of slapping, a lot of reaching. This is the key player for Stanford, Mark Manson. Now on a 10-1 to run since he's come back in, and he's got six. That's what we're talking about before. They're bringing out big men like Young to flash some defense. Well, the thing is, the high screen and roll, and Tim Young simply does what he's supposed to do. Step out and slow down Santangelo. I think he's set. So no call should be able to Santangelo go around him. It allows your point guard defensively to get up, back up, and catch up. Santangelo. Spoon feeds front. Rebound by Madsen. His presence always felt for the Cardinal. He's got five rebounds. And from getting a couple looks, but he's has to work for everything he's earned. Madsen fighting inside. Rebounded by Spink. And Zaga needs points in the worst way. And this is where Santangelo's at his best. Driving, firing, coming up short. Young is there to vacuum it in for the Cardinal. McDonough, the crossover, in traffic. Rebounded by Fromm and Gonzaga the other way. His third call. Maxson. What a pace, huh? Back and forth. Cardinals have not been afraid to push it themselves. Just have not been able to convert. Gonzaga only 37% from the field. They've had some looks, Kevin. Haven't been able to convert. A robust beginning to this one. Second round from Seattle. Good pass. Manson doubled inside, hooks it home. Good pass from Weems, good ball fake from Manson. Right now, the Cardinal on a 12-3 run. Santangelo and Fromm to get more shots. Weems is the best perimeter defender. He's matched up with Santangelo. Young brought out. Fromm, shot clock. Is at 13. What a move by Santangelo. Wouldn't go. McDonald is there. Out of bounds. Off the, oh, it's going to be off Gonzaga. A one-time lead of 13 for the Bulldogs is down to four. Time up. Well, the 10th seed, Gonzaga, coached by Dan Munson. He is the son of former Idaho and Oregon head coach, Don Munson. 1982, Don Munson uh, took his ball club, the Idaho Vandals, to the Sweet 16, lost to Oregon State. Interesting about Dan Munson. He said, you know, my dad didn't get me into coaching. Gene Bartow did. 
Want to know what Murray Barco? There's a good look at Don Munson. Proud of his son, former coach at Idaho and Oregon. Dan Munson went to Gene Barco and said, hey, what's Murray doing? A long time ago, and Gene simply said, well, he's a graduate assistant for Bobby Knight at Indiana, and Dan said, that sounds kind of interesting. Gene Barto said, you know what, my guy just left. How'd you like to do it here at Alabama Birmingham? And he said, you know, that's simply how I got started. Well, what a great man to work for, Gene Barto. And if you include his dad, one of nine other father-son coaching combinations in NCAA Division I basketball history. Gonzaga leads by four, then led by 13. Peter Sauer now back in the lineup, see if he can get some things going. South with the miss. Fromm has it. Gonzaga has scored just three points in the last seven minutes. After building a lead of double digits. Fromm, spin. Wiry though he is. Smithers inside. What a move. How about the footwork? The step through and around the big guys. Approaching three minutes to play as Iowa builds a seven-point lead on Arkansas. McDonald, Auburn in a tough one against Knights to Oklahoma State, up by two. Maxson. Over. Dench. Rebounded by Santana. And terrific block out by Spink. On side. Which they've got to do. Yes, they have to put a body on. Spink only goes about 190 to 195 pounds. The outside game of Gonzaga has been slow so far until right there. The assassin has loaded the chambers. Richie Fromm. From the other day, for Gonzaga nailed five three-point shots. That's his first today. On his way to 26 points in that ball game against Minnesota. The key to Gonzaga, Kevin. Ball movement, body movement, three up to shoot it. And open up the perimeter. Don't hold the ball, don't waste the dribble. From again. A little bit off. He wasn't quite shut. Rebounded by Lee. Come on, Hugh. Lee tries into Santangelo and into the teeth of the Gonzaga defense. Now, well, terrific move, but no backside help. Santangelo got beat off the dribble. Arthur Lee can do that to the best of them, but you have to have someone paying attention from the weak side to come help. Gonzaga calls a 22nd timeout. Take a look at Arthur Lee, one of the top point guards in the country, but where's the help? You have to recognize and give up yourself and give up your body and hope a teammate helps you. San Angelo simply beat off the dribble. Arthur Lee, another hoop win needed for his ball club. He has six points, but only two of seven from the field. Little Gonzaga against high-profile Stanford. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Cobb will get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores, and all the highlights, plus a live look in at all the action going on right now in the NCAA tournament. All coming up on Pennzoil at the half. The only West Coast Conference team, Gonzaga, invited to the big dance. Thought they were snubbed a year ago. And they're here to prove a point. Iowa still by seven. Leisure. Dench. Front. Leisure got a hand on it. Can't save it if he goes flying into the Stanford band. Good hustle. Let's hope he's okay. Remember, Leisure has two personal fouls. Has to be careful not to make up his third going after some rebound. Take a look at the rebound. Leisure has a chance. A little bump by McDonald. Looks like he's okay. I'm not sure, I'm not sure the band member is okay, though. We're checking her out right now. Weems to Manson to Lee. Great rotation. Manson fighting inside, out of bounds, and they discuss it. Jump ball, the tie-up. It's Gonzaga's possession. And Quinton Hall, the smallest of the Bulldogs at 5'8", was the one that tied up with Manson. This is how you team rebound. 5'8", 165, get in there and make an effort. Without Hall right there, Matson has a putback for two. Great screen by Dench for St. Angelo. You cannot defensively shoot the gap, Kevin. They will shoot lights out on you. You have to get on their backside and trail them and make them put it on the floor. A crushing screen set up the two. It's 34-26 Gonzaga in the final minute. 
Weems. Lee. Out to Weems. Great defense. He'll knock it in right in the face of a defender. Right back at you. You know, defensively, I thought Gonzaga was terrific there. Getting back to the shooters, double teaming Lee, got back to Weems. Didn't matter. Shot clock is done, so what you see is what remains. Either Hall or Santangelo should have the basketball late when the shot clock runs down. This guy creates the most because he can also shoot it himself. Stanford has a foul to give. Good defense. And picked up by Weems. Seconds off. They've got it for Sauer at the buzzer. What a momentum boost going into halftime. Great defense to push ahead. Gonzaga led by 13. Stanford comes back to chop it down to four. Well, the lead ahead. Good time awareness. They all understood how much was left. This is a big momentum booster for a ball club. Let's go to Mike Harris. All right, thank you very much. Coach, how concerned are you that your team won't be able to keep up the intensity they showed in the first half? That doesn't concern me at all. This is an NCAA game with everything riding on it. Uh, we'll be playing on a motion, and, and that's fine, but we've got to do it with a little more intelligence. We're fouling a little bit too much. We're trying to combat their physicalness. And on the other end, we've got to slow down on our shots. We're rushing our shots a lot. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Good luck in the second half. That's the end of the first half with the score. Gonzaga 34, Stanford 30. Ray Gumbel and Clark Kellogg will be along with Pennzoil at the half. And after this message and a word from your local CBS station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the new Chevy Silverado. Kemper Farms. The United States Air Force. And by Dell. Gonzaga with a surprising halftime lead over Pac-10, Stanford 34 to 30. With John Sunbold, this is Kevin Harlan. Some of your first half thoughts, especially on Gonzaga, which has kind of stolen the show so far. I thought solid on the defense. And we always talk about them pushing and scoring. Yes, they were 7 to 12 from the three, but defensively, they've befuddled uh, Stanford a little bit. Stanford running their offense, Gonzaga doing a great job. Well, it's going to be an interesting second half because Gonzaga comes in as the 10th seed, Stanford is the 2 seed, and some of the numbers through the first 20 minutes. Well, you take a look, low scoring ball game, the three point shooting we mentioned. Gonzaga 7 of 12. Not many free throws, though. They have not taken a ball to the rim with strength. Points in the paint. Obviously, Stanford is where they want to score. Stanford has no turnovers the last 14 minutes of that first half. And Gonzaga has held Stanford to only two offensive rebounds on 19 missed shots. And another interesting thing. We knew the Bulldogs had to rebound. They out-rebounded Stanford 20 to 17. All has it. Here come the Zags the other way. Eaton on top, pulling out Young. Santangelo working on Weeks. A three by Hall, and it couldn't come at a better time. Well, you know Stanford wanted to guard the three-point line. They're not getting it done. Lee to Young to Manson. Doubled, fouled inside. Eaton reaching in through the foul. That's his third, and he is what little size this team has. Take a look at even and the thing offensively about Gonzaga, Kevin, is they're setting the screens for guys with all their big players away. So that means if there is a switch by Stanford, then a big guy's on a guard. Big men are not used to playing people 20 feet from the hoop. Stanford, the only Pac-10 team remaining in the tournament, in particular with UCLA's loss Thursday against. Detroit and the hometown people here in Seattle were shot out by Wally Serbiak. They were. Down in New Orleans, Serbiak at tournament high, 43 points for Miami of Ohio. And the Huskies exited, as did Arizona. One point lost to Oklahoma and then Waro Nahara. That great guard they've got down there, Jason Terry. Eaton spinning, bouncing off Young, rejected by Young, gets it back, up and it's short, and it's picked up by Madsen. Not much inside. Stanford does not allow too many things to go. I think the key for Eaton is if you get it deep, you have to take it. 
But if you make a hard move and are double teamed, find your shooter. Chris Weems trolling the perimeter. Sauer at the shot clock approaching 15. Lee across the lane. Dumps it off to Young. Up and down and up again. What a move by Young. A little more patience on the offensive end. Calvin to Fromm. Let's see what he cooks up on the side. Good step out by Madsen. Put, make San Angelo put it on the floor. Angelo with the miss. Here comes Weems, and it's a four-point game. And all caused by the help that Madsen gave his teammate. Rifing his way inside his lead. What a play. Well, Dan Munson now has got to think about a timeout or to control his ball club. He has a very smart team. Good job by Santangelo. Slow it down a little bit. Get a set play run. Calvin. The call from West End Grand Bahama Bahamas. Eaton. Run is there. What a pass to Hall by the big man Eaton. Defensive mix up. They've been doing a nice job, but every time a cutter goes through, there's been a body on him, knocking him down, pushing him away. Nice recognition, though, by the point guard, who was stuck in a very tall area. Yeah, terrific job. Good cut. Sauer outside, looking for Young. Back to Sauer with the finger roll and a canceling move. Well, give and go. One of the strengths of Tim Young is simply passing the basketball. Arkansas by seven. Under a minute to play in the first half. Auburn holding on to a four-point lead over ninth seed Oklahoma State. Cowboys with an upset on Thursday. Maryland won. St. John's won. UConn won. All big. Santangelo shot as he threw it up in a foul called. And they'll put it on young Chris Weems. Emmy Award winner John Larroquette returns to television as Royal Payne. And keep it with an attitude. Don't miss the series premiere of Pain Monday after Raymond on CBS. So far, Gonzaga has been a pain for Stanford. And this is one of the guys that leads away. Nick Santangelo. Second all-time leading assist man to one John Stockton now in the NBA. Not a bad guy to model yourself after. John goes back in the summertime. In Spokane, they play a lot of basketball together. Sandangelo from Stockton. Ditch a screen. Nice move by Calvary. Keeps it alive. What a great volleyball tap. And again, the big guy setting the screens, freeing up the guard. Hall, a little bit long, collected by Manson. He's got eight rebounds now in his pocket. Lee, Sauer, doesn't quite stride. Ditch, cleans it up. Sandangelo, what a pace. From he'll maneuver and fire and miss in a foul called on Stanford inside a congested lane. <laughs> Tenth seed Gonzaga leading by 13 in the first half. Stanford coming back, the two seed, the only Pac 10 team remaining. After losses by UCLA and Arizona, most notably. Now at the free throw line is Fromm, a kid who belted in a ton of three-point shots in Gonzaga's opening round win against Big Ten Minnesota Thursday afternoon. Well, came out of the block shooting against the Golden Gophers, hit his four, his first four three attempts in that ball game on his way to 26 points. Last time, two times down, Kevin. Fromm and Santangelo have not been able to get their shot off this second half, so they put it on the floor. They've used their body to create contacts, and they've gone to the foul line. Little Gonzaga against high-profile Stanford. It's 42-37 this half. Zigzagging his lead. Out of bounds, Manson shoved into Camarillo and fouled on the play by Casey Cavalry. And I think Arthur Lee took a shot in his nose. Watch the penetration. He handles his own pressure easily. Now he takes an elbow to the chin. There's a force out by Calvary out of bounds. That's his third personal foul, but Arthur Lee got whacked across the top of his nose. If it's ever happened, you know, your eyes begin to water. You've got to clear the cobwebs, and it takes some time to kind of regain your bearings. Gonzaga that time, Kevin, went into a half-court trap, but Arthur Lee recognized it, went right through it on the dribble. Gonzaga and outside team, the strength of Stanford is inside play. And patience normally on the offensive end. They don't blow many teams out this Stanford target ball 
Stanford had a tough time with Alcorn State. In the first round, Reed hits Manson, shuffling, firing, missing inside, leaping rebound by Hall. It's one on two. He does have a trailer, and he flies inside. Knocked away. It's off his knee and goes back to the Cardinal. Terrific play by Arthur Lee. There's a timeout. Gonzaga leading 42 to 37. The good news is no fish were harmed when this was shot. The bad news is that somebody's dinner flying through the air. I know this thing about that, Kevin. If Richie Fromm or Matt Santangelo are working there, they catch it, they shoot it. Yeah, they fire. <laughs> now, Stanford, John Sunbolt, only two offensive rebounds on 22 misses. And this is a ball club that averages over 14 offensive rebounds a ball game. Third in the Pac-10. Solid. Manson double, squeezes. Young, tipped, Madsen again got a hand on it, and he was molested inside. And the tough part, that possession was the fact that Gonzaga in a 2-3 zone, Santangelo at 6-1, is the low man on the right side. So there he is on the left side of your screen. He's having a hard time. Even when you put a body on, it's not going to work. Going to bring back in Spink. Leaving his... Calvin, his fourth personal foul. He is a kid they cannot afford to lose. Well, solid ball game he has played on the defensive end. Eight points. Remember, he had the first eight of the ball game for Gonzaga. Lee on the perimeter. A little zone defense. And Spink, remember, 195 pounds trying to stay with Maxson on the block. Look at him just simply trying to push him around. He was in a football stance, wasn't he? Like he was going to get a block. <laughs> You give up 40 pounds to a guy that's got such good lower body positioning, as does Mark Matson. But that's the beauty of this tournament. We've got teams like Gonzaga with a enrollment of just under 5,000 against a power like Stanford. You've got players like that that have got to play against bigger players. Have to respond. And they know there's going to be aggressive ball game. With the lead to win. South into Matson. Terrific feed by Sauer away from the defense, and Matson with the power. Arkansas at halftime by seven over fifth seed Iowa. Auburn with that four-point lead at halftime over Oklahoma State. And look what Weems is doing, making San Angelo go inside. Terrific shot, but Weems is doing what he should do. Stay on the shooting shoulder, push him down the baseline. San Angelo just simply hit a tough one. San Angelo with 11 points. to Manson. Loose inside is 10 seed Gonzaga leads by five on the fly. Santangelo, the fake, the fly, the flash. Put back up and in. What a play, Santangelo putting in his own miss. And two Stanford bodies on the floor. Gonzaga being as physical as they can be. Two terrific hoops and much needed hoops for this Gonzaga team by Santangelo. Pandemonium in Seattle. A seven-point lead by Gonzaga. Sauer to Madsen to Reeves. What rotation? Lee for three. Right down the middle. All caused by the mismatches inside. Once Madsen gets the ball, they have to help speak down low. Eight threes by Gonzaga. Two by Stanford. The steal. Lee flies in. Caught it for two and a foul on Santangelo of Gonzaga. away from the Gonzaga player. Nobody saw it coming. Take a look at Arthur Lee coming from the back side, and Dench doesn't see anything. Weem smart enough to kick it ahead. The control and the patience and the poise on the break by Lee. Look where he comes from. Dench not even observing. Santangelo right here trying to make a play. Again, total body control and poise in midair. Lee, one of the best free throw shooters in college basketball. We already talked about what he did a year ago. 35 of 35 in the NCAA tournament. 44 consecutive with that train right there. 
And this is the closest it has been since the beginning. Paul Santangelo pumps by Lee. And again, they're making Sanangelo and Fromm go inside. No more long jump shot. Paul, Fromm, and Santangelo. On screens, you cannot shoot the gap. The Zags will shoot you out. Foul inside, called on Seaton. That's his second. And gotten Zaga fans react because they've had a lot of fouls called against them inside today. Stanford, the lone Pac-10 team remaining. Gonzaga, the only West Coast Conference team invited to the dance. 48% shooting for Gonzaga. Stanford at 41. A three by foul. Rebound by Stink. At 195 pounds, he is manning the pivot. He may be thin, but he's very active. Got great footwork. Paul, a wide open three, right between the arms. Another big one. Quinton Hall does. He continues to move without the basketball. His second three pointer this afternoon. McDonald around the screen. Flying inside. Slammed in by Manson. Where in the world did he come from? Oh, what energy this guy plays with. Two-point game. Hanson with ten rebounds. Spick. From a two-pointer in and out. Up for inside and vacuumed in by Matson. And Matson was a defender who put a hand in Fromm's face and then goes back and gets a rebound. Gonzaga on top by 249-47. McDonald jousting with Hall. Suffocating defense by Hall. Lee in front. Shot clock at 10. Lee knifing his way inside. Picked up by Hall, racing the other way. Four on three. Hall, with all kinds of options, sends it out to Santangelo. And he found Santangelo late. Santangelo was open for a split second. Eaton with the spinner. Pulled off the glass by Manson. He's got 12 rebounds. Lee with 11 and a half to play. And good poise and patience. Matson slow getting up the court, trying to catch his breath. Two-point game, a chance to tie. Matson, Lee, shot clock at 10. Lee for the tie and a foul. Santangelo got him on the elbow. Matson kicked that ball out, Kevin. He's trying to reestablish himself. Arthur Lee knows when and when not to take things. This time as he goes up, Santangelo knows how shooters shoot. Goes with the left hand to the right elbow. Smart play, but caught by Teddy Valentine down low. Stanford came in to this particular region. The highest seed, number two. As Lee hits the free throw, he is on the preseason college basketball cover of Sports Illustrated. Santangelo will take a breather. Ryan Floyd comes in for Gonzaga. And the cover boy, Lee, with one more try. For the tie at 49. We've got a game in Seattle. We're tied at 49 in round two of the NCAA. Tied at 49 with just over 11 minutes to play in the second half. And our Microsoft data bank talks about the great graduation rate under coach Mike Montgomery in his 13 years as the Stanford head basketball coach. They are setting a standard there, aren't they? They are. That's how you do it. Great young man. They're also setting a standard for points in the paint where Stanford has been dominant. Yeah, 26 for the Cardinals, only 8 for Gonzaga, but not unexpected. Gonzaga is a perimeter shooting team. They will look more for the jump shot, and they should because they can fire it from anywhere. Spink brings out Seaton. Outside for Hall. Back to Spink. Up in a lot of traffic and whacked inside. This kid is as gritty as you're going to find in the NCAA tournament. 195 pounds and banging with bodies twice the size of him. From nearby Bellingham, take a look. They're going to get Michael McDonald on a swipe from behind. 
but Mark Spink has not backed away from anything this afternoon. Arkansas by seven at the half down at Denver's McNichols Sports Arena. Reed with 13 as you see. Spink gets his first. They've started the second half and Auburn is holding on to a four point lead over ninth seed Oklahoma State. And earlier today, UConn St. John's who just obliterated Bobby Knight at Indiana. Both winning. Gonzaga by one, under 11 to play. Rebounding advantage for the Zags by nine. Still man to man. Matson out of the ball game. Still pounded down low. Seaton trying to plow his way inside. Having his way with Spink. But Spink comes up with it. What a play. The quickness off his feet versus Young. Good point. Hall to Spink. Outside to Nielsen. Floyd fighting through his screen. Regains his footing and out to Spink. Floyd, another great jump shooter. Arthur Lee has to stay tight. Spink will give the screen to Hall. Flashing defense is the 7-2 Young. A mismatch for Hall, which he tries to exploit. Eaton is open. What a shot. Good patience, good poise once again. Not rattled. Let everything clear itself out of the way. Hits the open jump shot. Terrific face-up shooter. Zaga by three, under 10 to play. Michael McDonald, the heir apparent to Arthur Lee at the point. Flying into Seton, rejected by Spink, and a foul was called outside on Gonzaga. Spink was there, and Spink got it. Three. And they're going to bring in Mike Leisure, and they'll take out Spink. And what great minutes that Mark Spink has given to his ball club. Doing all he can. I'm sure he'll get plenty to drink on the sideline. Okay, guys. One on one now. Mosley is in. Weems will leave for Stanford. So it's Lee, Seaton, Young, Mosley, and McDonald. For the Cardinal. There's Tim Young. Very good free throw shooter for a guy his size. Yeah, 7 2. He shoots 83%. What a smooth stroke he had. Stanford's been great for the line today. Well, not surprising. They shoot the ball extremely well. They shot the ball well yesterday on the free throw line. They shot 89%. Today, they missed right there. So 12 of 16. Oh, leisure the screen. There's a foul called, I think, on McDonald. Seaton was there. But the young point guard and the sophomore McDonald from Long Beach, California, picks it up. Picks up another foul. Gonzaga again sets a lot of screens for their shooters, but if you're McDonald or Lee or Weems, anybody guarding a shooter, go around all the screens. Quit running into it. Hall to Floyd to eat. Good help by Young. And he's left open. And he'll go down the lane. Rebound by Nielsen. An offensive rebound. A fresh 35. This team from Gonzaga, Kevin, has held their own on the glass. Eaton the miss. Leisure got a hand on it. Flopped up once, twice, a third time. Floyd is there. He was fouled on the play. And the hustle for Gonzaga is what is igniting this team and this crowd. Foul was on Lee, his first. Multiple opportunities are getting on the offensive end. And the aggressiveness. Tim Young stands, everybody's going for the ball, but what Gonzaga is doing is pushing Stanford underneath the rim too far. Continue to get more opportunities, they'll be able to score. Good pass. Eaton, out of bounds, Young jostled it free. But there is another story, and that's the foul problems that are existing for Gonzaga right now. Lead by two, approaching nine to play in the half. Madsen. Stanford can tie. Young. Great defense, pulled down by Hall. And the Zags running. And Hall there's numbers. Numbers. Indeed. What a pass by Hall. All created because Tim Young fell down on one end and no communication and helping your teammate on the offensive end. Quinn Hall saw it, eaten with an easy two. 54 to 50 Gonzaga. 
Mosley with the drive. Doubled inside. Hemmed in. McDonald fakes the three into Young. Unsuspecting of the pass. Mosley for three. Oh, another rebound. And Stanford looks like they're playing hot potato. How fast can they get rid of it and shoot it? That's not their style. What seductive fakes by Hall. But it wouldn't go in. But he had the clean shot. Now Mike Montgomery wants Arthur Lee to take control of this thing and say, hey, let's get a good possession. Lee tries to take it right inside, and sure enough, he draws the foul. This is going to be called on Quinton Hall, who just pulled off a Houdini at the other end <laughs> with one seductive fake after another. Guys, we got one on one now. And here's Lee. teams, Gonzaga and Stanford, built substantial leads Thursday and then watch both of them slip away. A miss right there and a shocker for Lee, who's now five of six and stops his string of consecutive free throws. Floyd, dancing on Lee. Floyd not one to create it for himself off the dribble. He got a screen from Floyd. Rebound inside by the hustler Nielsen. A Stanford foul with 7.45 to play. Nielsen has been all over the offensive glass in the last four minutes since he's entered this ballgame. Young man from right here in Seattle, Washington. Once again, fighting. Saving the ball back in, but the push out of bounds by Mosley. John, offensive rebounding has been the shocking stat of the day. Unbelievable. Gonzaga with 12, Stanford with only five. Who would have thought that? Nielsen at the line. He is their best defender for Coach Dan Munson. From Seattle, so playing in front of a hometown crowd. You don't think he feels it? And he gets a clutch free throw. And Gonzaga accepts as their lead to five. 55 to 50. And what Dan Munson has been able to do is put enough players in this ball game that have contributed. And Nielsen from the foul line, yes, but also really the offensive rebound and the hustle that he's provided this team. A 7-1 to one run by Gonzaga. The crowd is on their feet. They lead by six. Under eight to play. Capacity filled Key Arena in Seattle with John Sunbold and Mike Harris. This is Kevin Harlan. Gonzaga, the 10th seed, leading two seed Stanford by six, under eight to play. And who would have thought this right here? Gonzaga leading the rebound in, 43 to 29. But this group has come in and physically challenged Stanford. Stanford, John, with one point in the last three and a half minutes of basketball. Over the last four. Sauer, Mosley, Weems, Madsen. Somehow he squeezed it in. He pried it in with two defenders right there. Kevin, it goes back to experience. Stanford starting five has been together a long, long time. They won a lot of close ball games this year and last year in the NCAA tournament. the leisure who leisurely trolls the perimeter and the bomb squad is in for Dan Munson Floyd Santangelo and from they thrive with the perimeter game from Weems is there single digits in the shot clock Santangelo off the dribble detonates rejected by Lee what a defensive play shot clock violation authored by Arthur Lee a terrific play you want quick hands young man that's quick here Iowa just got a three, and Arkansas leads by four. Take a look at Arthur Lee. Hang time, and then the quickness. The bat away, shot clock runs out. Good stop by this Cardinal squad. Auburn by five. Maryland, an easy time with the Blue Jays at Creighton. And Coach Dana Altman, who had a first-round win. Stevie Francis is terrific. St. John's, Clobbered, Indiana, with a three against a six, winning 86 to 61. UConn with the win. Manson with the hook. Eaton with the rebound. Foul called on Sauer. And so close 
Tribune and Elbow called on Eaton. Sauer was playing with Eaton for a while, just kind of simply reaching a little bit. And watching Elbow at the end of this thing. Just kind of reaching, having fun. Now watch the Elbow come across. Nails it. They caught the reach earlier for the foul, but that was close. Eaton is at the free throw line from Benton City, Washington. Sent out last year to get stronger. And he has gone through the junior college routine. Standing on the free throw there, retrieved by Crom. A fresh 35, another offensive rebound. Well, that free throw hits so hard. Crom simply stepped in and caught it. Eaton. Here comes Santangelo trying to carve some room on Lee. Crom. Had an opening, got a screen, now it's double. Spink, Santangelo, shot clock at 11. And how quickly Weems and Lee again are getting to the shooter. Santangelo wheels and deals and fires and hits. Kevin, what I like about it is the patience after he makes the turn. He doesn't rush anything. He's calm enough to get in the middle of the paint, see what's going on and deliver. Under six minutes to play. Final 14 from a year ago, Stanford. With Lee up and off and a foul. He'll go to the stripe for complete coverage. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. Here's our stat of the game and the rebounding story. Who would have thought Little Gonzaga would out-rebound big-time Stanford? Well, we knew they had to to stay in this ballgame, and Dan Munson obviously told his players the same thing, and what a terrific afternoon they've had. And all by toughness. They're not as big, they're not as physical, they're not as strong, but they've gotten the job done. In the tournament, when emotion and passion seems to rule, anything can happen. Here's Stanford, the number one preseason team by Sports Illustrated, with their cover boy at the line right now, Arthur Lee. But I go back to a year ago in their trip to the Final Four. Who will forget maybe that great comeback against Rhode Island down six with 59 seconds left. They whittled it away until Arthur Lee knocks the ball away from Mobley of Rhode Island, picks it up, Gives it to Maxson for the dunk three-point play. That wins that ball game. So this veteran group is going to be patient towards the end of this game. Zaga's lead is down to four. They led by 13 in the first half. Santangelo and Weems. Calvin had a screen. And fighting through it was Maxson. Paul decides to drive. Comes it out to Santangelo. A three. He faced up Weems, looked like he was going off the dribble. The quickness of getting it from a shooting position to the release. 61-54, 10th seed Gonzaga. Lee to Weems, whacked as he shot a three. Eaton draws the foul. He's got four and three shots coming up for Arthur Lee. A total bad foul. And Dan Munson couldn't believe it. Never foul a jump shooter after the release of the ball. Eaton trying to make up some room. And Dan Munson could not believe it. Iowa has come back to tie Arkansas at 47. What a game in Denver. And now they go up by two to the Hawkeyes. Auburn leading by five. Under 10 to play in the second half. Weems throws up the shot and hits it. I believe it before I said Arthur Lee, Weems is at the line. And Weems, you'd already had him. He took a quick shot from the corner. He had missed it. And he made a silly foul. The lead is cut down to five with 5.04 to play. Stops again. And it stops the momentum that Gonzaga had built up. They get that rebound. The crowds are going crazy. Santangelo, Weems is there, and Lee is now shadowing Hall. And once Santangelo gives it up, they should allow him to get it back. Fromm was whacked by Mosley as he was up and popped and ready to fight. One foul to the next. Watch how quickly Fromm catches and releases, squares the body. 
hard to tell from that angle if it was ball or elbow, but Richie Fromm obviously agrees with the call. Look at the quickness of the square up. Oh, there's the arm. Good call. Fromm is a junior from Battleground, Washington. Hit five threes the other afternoon against Minnesota. Now he goes three of three from the free throw line right here. A very confident team. Richie Fromm, one of those players early in the season. They beat Memphis. He had 37. They beat Washington. They beat Washington State. They led Kansas in Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, so they're not afraid to play anybody. And I think after the ball game against Minnesota, Kevin, I felt this ball club thought they were snubbed because everybody wanted to talk about Minnesota's problem and the best players were playing. And the Gonzaga kids said, hey, we would have won anyway. Double take is right there on the Dan Munson bench. They bring back in Mike Nielsen from Seattle. Nielsen has played well. And Dan Munson continues fresh, active bodies in there. That's why they've had the rebound again. Here comes the lead. Paul is on. Double play. Back out to Mosley. Guarded by Nielsen. The drive. Knocked away. What a steal by Nielsen. Terrific ball game by Nielsen. All the intangibles. Stanford turns it over for the first time in 20 minutes. Calvary sours on him like a blanket. Launching is Santangelo. It may have been tipped on the way up. Manson gets it. Weems the other way. They've got numbers as he flies. Rejected by what a play. I think Nielsen came from the backside and tipped it away. Calvary with the wonderful play and a 20-second timeout taken by Gonzaga. This crowd is going crazy. Mike Nielsen has done it all afternoon long defensively. Came from behind, he knocks it away with his left hand. Calvary playing solid defense on one end. But again, the number of bodies that Dan Munson has put in this ball game that have responded, whether it's Nielsen or Spink or Leisure, everybody doing the positive thing. All problems right now for Gonzaga. And you're talking about three players they need in Calvary, Spink, and Eaton. And we're talking about the size. All of these top three guys are inside players. Under four to play. 10th seed Gonzaga up by six over two seed Stanford. Aiden Young is in. Good face up shooter, remember. Not going to double him. Drive to Hall. Hall will launch a three. Oh, what a shot! today the sophomore from nearby Tacoma Washington eight points on the afternoon he had the first eight of the ball game for this Bulldog team the lead is 10 the biggest lead for Gonzaga has been 13 back in the first half some emotion in this building very thick with emotion Lee lost it Weems picks it up Cardinal has some work ahead of him. Off the screen lane, across the way. Dumping it out to Reigns. Lee for three. Tapped out of bounds. Off Gonzaga. Off 6'11 senior Jeremy Can you believe the happenings in Seattle? 
It's Sanger by 10, 2.47 to play. Ten seed Gonzaga by 10 over second seed Stanford, the highest seed in the West. Well, what a tournament it's been. St. John's, the Sweet 16 for the first time under Mike Jarvis. Going back to 91, Louis Karnaseka was the coach of St. John's then. And the Pac-10 resting their hopes on this Stanford ball for the last two years. There have been four teams in the Sweet 16 for the Pac-10. McDonald to lead, pounded by Nielsen. Weems finding the 7-2 young. A sweet looking hook inside. And good half-court set and good patience by this Stanford ball club on the timeout. Now a little bit of trap at half-court. No Matson will get back straight man to man. Stanford's first field goal in almost five minutes. Five minutes. Nielsen. And Weems got caught with an elbow across the chin himself. Great matchup, Santangelo and Lee. What's the strategy now for Gonzaga? Well, good ball movement. Run some clock down, set some good solid screens. I think Santangelo has to have the basketball in his hands as the shot clock's running out. Like right now, behind his back, a flare up and fouled inside. The key, Kevin, is he's so good shooting the ball, but he's also terrific handling it. So once it's in his hands, you have to stay close enough so he doesn't pull the trigger on you. But the closer you get, he controls his body, a la John Stockton a little bit. As he goes to his right, the little lead with the left shoulder, get contact by the defender, go to the foul line. So Santangelo cultivates a couple of free throws, and he gives Gonzaga another lead of nine. Make it 10. And now with 20 on the afternoon for Santangelo. Here comes Lee. Let go. Weems for three. Maxson loses it out of bounds. And Stanford knows they simply can't exchange hoops or anything. They have to pick up full court defensively now. Iowa's got a one-point lead, second half. Look at the hustle by Matson and the frustration couldn't simply get a hold of the basketball. Auburn leads by five, deep in the second half there. Now, Kevin, more sense of urgency for this Cardinal ball club on that defensive end. Calvary will look to inbound, wisely calls a timeout. The defense of Stanford put him in a straight jacket. And he had no choice. Mike Montgomery has the defenders in. McDonald weaves in lead. Timeout. Gonzaga by 10. Under two to play. Gonzaga, the 10th seed against two seed Stanford. Later today, Florida at six against 14th seed Weaver State. Weaver State beat North Carolina to advance to the second round. Gonzaga by 10, 147 to play. Full court pressure, they make the steal. Lee on Santangelo, up and off. Rebound, brought down by Fromm, and he got the pass away to Santangelo. Another steal, Weems for three. Oh, what a kill. How about the aggressiveness defensively? Arthur Lee a little bit out of it, control didn't answer it. But Fromm got himself in trouble both times in the corner. Once they made the entry pass, there were four white jerseys. Here's Arthur Lee, they make the steal. Doesn't convert. The ball goes to the corner, Fromm gets knocked down, tries to make the pass. San Angelo can't get rid of it, look at Weems. Backs up, eyes the target, gets his feet set, knocks it home, and a quick timeout by the Stanford team. Never say die for this ball club. And defense has truly been the cardinal calling card all season long in the Pac-10. You see the timeouts remaining, but they've been able to win a lot of close games. We talked about the experience. 55 times this Bison has gone on the floor together, and they've only lost nine times. 128 to play now, and Gonzaga's lead is down to seven. And last time, Kevin, if Gonzaga clears the ball, they have numbers on the other end. They can do a number of things. They can either pull it out and run clock, or they'll get a layup. Hall, shadowed by McDonough, bounced by Maxson. They get it to Santangelo. They cross the line. Eaton. 
Calgary was held by McDonald. The clock is down to 118, and Gonzaga will have free throws, leading by seven. Calgary only a 53% free throw shoot. So good foul by this Stanford team. McDonald fouled the right man. You know, it's interesting when you watch Mark Madsen, 6'9", 235, 240, on the point of pressure. That's in a big day, 15 points and 13 rebounds, and here's Calvary, one and two from the free throw line. And rolls around. Good coaching changes here. Sauer comes in, Young goes out. Sauer more versatile offensively. Can go outside, and Nielsen comes in for his defensive presence. Has been a terrific rebounder this afternoon. Got that one to go. The lead is eight. 1.15 to play. Lee, right by Hall. What a move! And you often see that, Kevin, because the defense does not want to foul. And Arthur Lee is as good as anyone at turning the corner and finishing. A mesmerizing move by Arthur Lee. And take a look at Calvary. Got caught with his back to the basketball. Though he has four personals, does not want to challenge Lee with an easy two. Down six, 111 left. Again, the reminder, a year ago, Rhode Island, down six with 59 seconds left. And they were able to come back by their defense with steals, three-point shooting, and won that ball game. And Saga has one timeout and a 20. Stanford with two timeouts. And now Calvary goes out for Gonzaga. They've got their shooters in. Oh, they didn't cover from. Right down the lane. They've got to push. McDonald to Lee. Hall is there. Look at the suffocating defense by Hall, and they call him for the foul. And not a good foul. Had Lee along the baseline. Not a good decision by that young man. You know, Stanford has put a lot of full court pressure on them, denying the basketball. And last time when Gonzaga took it out, look at over the top. Richie Fromm simply releases. And our guy, Mike Nielsen, puts it right on the money again. But the patience and the poise for Fromm just to make sure he makes the basket. Don't get in a hurry. Senior Arthur Lee. Amongst the best free throw shooters in college basketball. The lead is down to seven. Ryan Floyd checks in. What a tight one they've got in Denver with Arkansas, the four seed over the five seed Hawkeyes by one. Second lead free throw is in. And Auburn now a four point advantage on ninth seed Oklahoma State. It's just amazing. A year later, I'll tell you it again. Rhode Island, sweet of the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four. Up six, 59 seconds left. In Seattle, first round, 99. Stanford down six, 59 seconds left. Hanson picks up the foul. That's number three. Hall will be at the free throw line where today, I believe it's Hall. Make it Richie Fromm. He has put up a four or five effort from the strike this afternoon. 78% free throw shooter. Very confident young man watching his team work out and practice the game against Minnesota on Thursday. They expected to win. They didn't care about the suspensions. Confident in practice yesterday. Walked in this afternoon. Very calm. Now it's the free throw. Following this game, as Gonzaga builds their lead to seven. It'll be Florida Weber State, and some of you will see 12th seed Detroit against 4 seed Ohio State. And what Dad Mun Dan Munson is doing, offensive players and defensive players, free throw shooters versus defenders. He just took Ryan Floyd out, got Calvary back in. Big side player can rebound. Fromm, if he makes it, will go out, and Eaton, the 6'11 body, will come in. So he is really being particular how he substitutes. Terrific job from the sideline. Now they bring back Eaton, take out Fromm, 
and they got their defensive unit in. And if you're Quinton Hall, be solid up front and make lead. Let, make them shoot it over the top with a hand in their face. Eight-point lead. Closing it on 50 seconds to play. Reams of three. Oh, what a big shot. Boy, the catch and the release is second in the last minute. He deployed a three that had nothing but net. And now it's a five-point game. 74-69 in Saga. Timeout with 49 seconds to play. Chris Weems with a jaw-dropping three-point shot. This senior-laden ball club does not want to be done yet. Everyone in this arena thought this game was over, but the Cardinals will not go away. Nielsen gets it to Santangelo, a great ball handler, back to Nielsen. And he's quickly fouled with 45.9 seconds left in the second half clock. A little bit surprised San Angelo got rid of that basketball so early, so easily. Once he made the catch, I thought he would split the seam on the bounce and then bring it up the floor. It's 2-2 two two from the free throw line. Zaga has one timeout plus a 20. Stanford down to one timeout themselves. You can almost, for that Stanford team, as you take a, a look at that bench, you can almost feel their stomachs drop and their hearts stop. Tough situation to be in, but the young man on the foul line, coming back home, played at Shortcrest High School right here in Seattle. The numbers won't say he's played huge, but what a contribution. This six-point game lead. Maneuvering, and he got tangled up in the legs of Jeremy Eaton. He'll foul out with 40 seconds to play. Well, it simply doesn't end, does it, partner? Wow. The step out, Arthur Lee smart enough to always attack the outside knee, especially if a big man wants to step out. Normally, they can't make the step to cut you off. Iowa jumping on top of Arkansas. Now with another basket leading 71-66. The Coslins had a great second half for the Hawkeyes. And look at Auburn in a close match, a two-point lead over ninth seed Oklahoma State. Here, there may be a Cinderella storm with Gonzaga leading it 75-70. to Stanford has to find a way to make some steals. Gonzaga, a very good free throw shooting team, 73, 73% as a team. So every one of their guys can go up and knock them in. Stanford has made eight consecutive free throws. Make it nine, and the lead is four for Gonzaga. Good job by Hall. Hall quickly held by Sauer. You can see exactly what Stanford has to do, and you can also see the substitution pattern by Dan Manson, the coach of Stan uh, Gonzaga, as he puts in a defensive unit, then an offensive unit, and the is like an accordion, back and forth. One group goes in, one group comes out. And Stanford trying to foul early, see if they can exchange two for three. And maybe Hall doesn't make any. So maybe a four-point lead is two possessions, even if he makes them both only two possessions. Coming up next, Weber State in Florida. Hall hits his first free throw today. Lead is five. Casey. What a second half he has had. No points the first half. All 12 of them when they needed him most. And Zaga's lead at six. Lee. Good defense by Santangelo. On Reeves. Here's Lee. Inside around Cavalry. Santangelo's cut it. And fouled. And Chiarita will make some noise. Time is not ticking now for Gonzaga. Time is hammering. The miss again. I'm surprised they didn't take a three. The catch by our guy Santangelo. Matt has played terrific. The foul. Reactions. Smooth as silk. Goes to the foul line, knocks it another. And the interesting thing about Santangelo, Mike Montgomery, the Stanford coach, was recruiting Santangelo in Lee. And whoever came first 
Whoever committed first was going to go. And Lee came before Santangelo. Here's Lee at the other end. A three. Rebound by Crown. Another Stanford foul. simply push and fire, but I think it's too late, obviously. Gonzaga, a team that was confident coming in. They thought they belonged last year. They're here this year. They're making some noise. What a terrific afternoon for this Bulldog. Gonzaga by 10 with 21 seconds to play. Perhaps the biggest upset of the tournament in the making. Gonzaga leads by 10. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Matt Santangelo from Gonzaga. Mark Madsen from Stanford. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements. Final seconds. Wins for three. It's not over. He buries a three with 14 seconds to play. And Chris Williams continues to knock in the shots he gets. He's banged in four threes. Then Tega by seven with just under 15 seconds to play. Tenth seed Gonzaga over two seed Stanford, the highest seed in the West. 81-74. Gonzaga to inbound. They led by 13 and got close as a couple. Quinton Hall has it. Quickly whacked in the play by me. Well, Stanford had to have a steal on the pass. Gonzaga player simply walking to the foul line, making shot after shot. Well, truly, this is one of the great upsets of this tournament so far in a regional which has seen innumerable upsets, like North Carolina losing to Weber State late Thursday night. And the second one right here. Stanford a season ago was in the final four. In fact, the lineup they started today was the same they started in San Antonio a year ago. Those that have seen this Gonzaga team play all year long, Kevin, will not be surprised by this game. They had to rebound, they had to be physical, they did it. And their perimeter players are as good as any in the country. Lee off the fingertips of Manson. Well, Dan Munson's doing what his father did. His father, Don, took Idaho in 1982 to the Sweet 16, and now Dan Munson has Gonzaga to Phoenix. And for little Gonzaga University, dreams do come true. Gonzaga is in the Sweet 16, beating last year's Final Four participant, Stanford. For John Sunbold, Kevin Harlan from Seattle, let's go back to New York and break up. Kevin Harlan, thank you. Gonzaga springs.